final reading today comes to us from the first letter of John, the first chapter. <clears throat> we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. You may be seated. Right? Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again, right? Um, yeah. Uh, Paris Deacon Ann gave me a, a set of solar glasses because I told her I didn't have any. And uh, but then I opened them, and there, there's an expiration on them. We can only use them for three to five minutes, and then they don't work. So I'm like, yeah, I'll use them all day today, and then I'll look at the sun and I'll go blind again. Uh, so uh, I've got my 3D glasses. Uh, we have friends of ours who came up from North Carolina this weekend for the eclipse. And I said to them, welcome to Ohio. Why are you here? <laughs> you know? I just like, I, you know. I mean, they're friends, and it's good to see them and all, but they came up not to see us, but to, to see darkness. And in and, and Dublin, and I'm saying, well, <laughs> you should go to Marion if you want to see it for longer. You know, and they said, well, we'll ride with you. And I said, I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, I'm staying at home, right? And, uh, and you know, the, the multitude, Ann asked me when I came in this morning, how was traffic? And I'm like, I was the only one on the road. I, I don't know. <laughs> it amazes me how intrigued and drawn to darkness we are. And I think it's kind of this, this, you know, for uh, as, I, as I look the chart, and I know that the the path of totality has shifted. And so we get like three minutes and 32 seconds of darkness, and we just can't wait. <laughs> right? Right? I mean, uh, why are we so drawn to darkness? Um, during Lent, we, uh, we got to come face to face with the seven deadly sins. 
and we each got to, uh, to relish in our favorites, and we came to realize how much we like hanging with those faces than we do the righteous, because we're drawn to darkness. And why is that? Why are we, why are we drawn to the dark side? Right? Um, that, that's what John is talking about today in the scriptures. Right? It's talk about being children of dark and children of the light. And it says that uh, in, in this first letter, it says, God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. In the Gospel uh, of John, in the prologue, the, first, the beginning of the first chapter, you know, it talks about Jesus being the light. No darkness can overcome. That is just pure, total light. And yet the Gospel goes on and said, He came into the world, and the world did not know him. Why? Because they like the darkness and not the light. Why is that? Why are we drawn to the darkness? You know, there's, we believe there's power in the darkness because people can't see us. We hide things, right? Um, that's why we talk behind people's backs. That's why we do things in secret because we think that people can't see us. But then... Uh, God continually says, everything will be brought to light. Everything will be brought to light. And God flips the big switch, and the lights come on, and then all of a sudden, the power of the darkness is gone. This, there is no secret, and we all know. And we're, and we're called to walk in that light the light of God, the light of Christ, that, that we're called to live our lives exposed. We're called to live our lives openly, honestly, transparently as possible. And we're, we're called to live in a community so that we throw the light switch on, on each other. And we don't like that because we'd rather feel the comfort of the dark. Yesterday, in our faith journey uh, session, we did an overview of the entire Bible in four and a half hours. We were on it. <laughs> and it was fun. And what we found out was that there is this cycle throughout Scripture of, of God's people. That the people sin and are broken and fall into darkness. And then God shines light on them and confronts them and calls them to confession and repentance. And through repentance, they find the path to restoration. And God reminds them of the promise that's given to them. And, and once they're restored, um, you turn the page and we have sin and brokenness again. And the cycle continues from the beginning of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. This cycle. Darkness, light, restoration. Darkness, light, restoration. That's the faith life we're called to, right? John is calling us to be children of the light and not children of the dark. Right? And uh, he's calls us to constantly evaluate ourselves and see when we're walking in the dark and when we're walking in the light. And he says, this is um, scripturally where we get our uh, traditional, the beginning of the confession, right? We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God will just, will forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then in the book it says, period of silence for reflection and self-examination. And we don't like that. <laughs> we don't like the silence because that's us in our darkness and becoming exposed to the light. 
even in the gospel reading today. You know, Jesus offers the disciples peace. This is, uh, this is on the evening of the resurrection. And then with that peace, he, I send you out as the Father has sent me. And then tells them that kind of the first thing, their mission is about forgiveness and confession and absolution. If you forgive their sins, they're forgiven. If you retain their sins, they're retained. It's about this process that part of witnessing is this shedding light, calling to repentance, leading to restoration, right? Moving people from being children of darkness to children of the light. That's what we are called to do, right? We're, we, and John ends this passage uh, in 1 John, and he says, it's not only about your sin that, that we celebrate Easter for, but he said, I'm going to put my real glasses on now, but also for the sins of the whole world, that this all goes down, that the light shines on it. And part of our witness, part of our mission is to go out to the world to walk with people in their darkness as we're in the midst of our darkness and lead us and them and together we walk to the light. And, it, and it's, a, it's that process of, of confessing with God confronting us of our darkness. And part of repentance is the, the changing of our minds, the changing of our actions, and then the part we really struggle with, it's fixing what we broke. That's part of repentance. That's what leads to restoration. That is the peace of God when we're fixing what we broke. And that's relationships with ourselves. That's relationships with our God. That's relationships with each other. That's relationship with all creation. We have to fix what we broke. That's what it means to walk in the light. right? To be bearers of the light. To, to, um, to take the light of Christ, the light of God, the light of the Spirit into a dark world and show them what life is all about. Um, today, today, April 7th, is Rain's baptismal anniversary. Yeah. April 7th, of 2013, she came to a font like that. Um, a few years ago, on April 7th, it was also her first communion, interesting enough. In a couple weeks, we get another baptism here. It'll be exciting. My favorite part is always, especially with the young ones, right, is, is when I take the little candle and I light it off the Paschal candle and I hold it right in front of their face, right? And I say, uh, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Reminding us that, that the light is in us. the light that no darkness can overcome. No matter how much darkness we walk in in our lives, that darkness cannot overcome the light of Christ in our hearts. Ever. And, and it's that hope that we take to the world. It's that hope that, that we allow the world to see the love of God that works through us, who, who leans towards the darkness just as much as we lean to the light. And we get to tell the world that, that God sent a son here so that you may see the light that God has already placed in you. That is the good news. The good news that there is a way and that way will be lit by God's love and the light that comes through Christ in the Holy Spirit, and we get to be the bearers of that light. That's a powerful mission for the world, right? It is through our light in the world that we will bring God's
peace to this place. That's a powerful message. So uh, tomorrow, at what time is it? What time does it? Three what? 312? The boss said it was 312, right? So this is on about 310, so you don't accidentally. Well, is it three or is it one? Okay, totality. Okay, it starts going like this. It starts getting darker. I oh, gotcha. Okay. See, I got to read. That's why I have you in my life, so that you can <laughs> keep, 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 me, keep me true on these things. Uh, yeah, I'm going home too. I'm not, I'm not staying here either. Um, but when you put your dark glasses on, remember that n- no matter how dark they are, The light of Christ will always shine through. Right? Because, now it's my understanding, because I've, I've, I've looked online, which is always true. No? <laughs> you don't think that was right? Okay. All right. right. That even at its totality, you will still see the sun. Because darkness cannot overtake the light. And it'll be this halo around the darkness reminding us of God's total presence in this world. Calling us to always be the light even in the darkest. Because God promises us that there will always be a dawn. And you will live in that light glorious and radiant forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the day of the resurrection, The first day of the week. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Uh, 
parish deacon Ann gave me a set of glasses for the eclipse. I'm sure these will work. Okay. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Right. Um, I'm amazed. Uh, we have uh, friends that came up from, from North Carolina um, to see the eclipse. And I, and I said, why? Why come up to see the eclipse? Um, interesting. And uh, when I got here this morning, Paris Deacon Ann asked me how the traffic was. I'm like, I was the only one on the road. It was pretty good. <laughs> it's not too bad. Um, I'm not coming up tomorrow, but... Uh, I'll commend that all to you. I'm intrigued by all of this, this excitement and, uh, and, uh, and, and just everything wrapped around. We shut down the city and schools and work and all this for uh, three minutes and 32 seconds of darkness. Now, see, in Dublin, we're only going to get 28 seconds. We get less darkness than you do. And so I'm intrigued. Why are we so drawn to the darkness? Why? Why do we get excited about the darkness? Why do we lean that way? Uh, during Lent, um, they're gone now, right? My, uh, Elisa made sure that I took them out of here, right? But we got to come face to face with the seven deadly sins. And, and we got to see just how much we kind of enjoy the darkness. So why does humanity prefer the darkness over the light? Why are we not as excited about the vast amount of light tomorrow? But instead the three minutes and 32 seconds of darkness. I think that's what John is talking about this morning in this, in this lesson that, uh, that Anne read for us, right? Um, it says here that God is light in whom there is no darkness. In the Gospel of John, in the beginning, the prologue, the first chapter of John, um, John talks about the light of the world coming into the world, Christ. And it said, He came into the world and they did not know Him because the world preferred the darkness. Why is that? Why do we love the darkness more than the light? Hmm. Right. Yesterday, um, we did an overview of the Bible in four and a half hours. It was, it was, it was fun. We had a good conversation. And in that conversation, we came to realize that time and time and time and time and time again in Scripture, God's faithful people fell into darkness, brokenness and sin. And what God did was then shine the light on it all. Exposed them for where they were and what they were doing. And who, were they, who they were becoming. And then called them to repentance, the action of changing, so that then they could be restored to the fullness of the promises of God. And that was the cycle darkness of brokenness and sin, light shining upon them, confronting them with who they are, what they were doing, calling them to repentance, moving them to restoration. And then the cycle continues, and the cycle continues, and, and uh, you know, two o'clock in Bible study, we figured that the cycle continues from book to book, right? Why do we like the darkness over the light? What, what power is in the darkness? We think there's power in the darkness. That's why we talk behind people's backs. That's why we do things in secret. 
That's why we, have, why we have meetings and gatherings and don't invite people that maybe should be there. Yes? I mean, not here. We don't do that here, do we? <laughs> we do? Clearly, I haven't been invited. <laughs> right? Because we think there's power in the darkness. We think there's control. There's, there's something in it that, you know, until the light shines on it all. And the darkness loses its power because it's no longer secret. In fact, it probably wasn't as secret as you thought it was. And everything's brought to light. And then we're called to reconcile all of that. We're called to, to, uh, to acknowledge our participation, to, to confess our brokenness, to accept responsibility and consequence for what we've done. That's God shining the light on us. That's the actions of repentance, right? That's why in this reading from, from 1 John is what we traditionally have in our, our um, confession liturgy, right? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then in the book it says, silence for self-reflection and examination. And then we just wish Parish Deacon Ann would move to the next piece. Right? Because light is shining on our darkness. And we're, so we're unsettled with that. You know, so in this passage of Scripture, even in, in, the, in the Gospel of John today, right? Jesus appears on that evening of the resurrection to the, to, the, to the apostles and says, peace be with you, a couple times. And then says, as my Father has sent me, I send you. And then tells them to do what? To acknowledge and forgive sin. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain them, they are retained. Right? That action of going out into the world, being the light to shine on the darkness so that it calls us to repentance, to change, to change our minds, change our actions. It also calls us to fix what we have broken. That is repentance. That is what brings peace. It's not that we say, I'm sorry, and walk away. i got to fix it now. And that action brings the peace of God. That's what he sends the disciples out to do, to be the light in the darkness of the world, to, to show people that there is this cycle that God continually has that wants to bring us to restoration to wants us to live in the fullness of the light despite our desire for the darkness. Right? God calls us to be children of the light and to give up our children of the darkness-ness. In three weeks, we're going to have a baptism at this service. I'm so excited. You know I get excited about baptisms. And, and uh, we're going to throw water everywhere. But then we come to that favorite part where I take the candle and I light it off the Paschal candle and I come up to those little children and I hold it right in front of their face. And they say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And then I hand it to them. And then the parent snatches it from me before they get it. It's an exciting moment. I love it. It's tension-filled. <laughs> right? But that excitement for them to hear, they are light. And the Christ light shines in them. So much so that God wants them to go out into the world to be the light in the dark. Today is Rain's baptismal anniversary. April 7, 2013, she was baptized, child of God. Uh, it took 
two bishops and four pastors to do it, but it happened, right? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, later on when I get home, we're going to remember her baptism by taking her candle and lighting it once again as we do every year on this day, right? Reminding her that the light of God shines in her to be the light of the world. The light of God shines in you. Each one of you. The light which no darkness can overcome. Regardless of how much we want to stay in the darkness, the light of Christ will always outshine it. Right? So, tomorrow, now, um, Corey was telling me, it really starts at like one something, right? Is when the eclipse starts, right? And it starts to get dark and dark and dark, and then it gets dark at like total darkness at three something, right? Um, and when you put your glasses on, right? Right? <laughs> you don't think these are going to work? Yeah. Right? And when you put your glasses on, no matter how dark they are, you will see the light of the sun. Right? No matter, and it's, and it's in the path of totality, at that second, the sun will still shine. And you'll see around this halo, which is God's reminder of hope to us, that there is no darkness that can overcome the light. Not in God, not in creation, not in you. And so today, God calls you to go out into the world and to be the light of the world, to shine light on the darkness, to help people come to be children of the light, right? To begin by fixing your own brokenness, and the brokenness that you caused, which serves as an example to the world that the brokenness can be fixed. Brokenness in my relationship with myself, brokenness of my relationship with my God, brokenness with my relationship with this community, and the community of all God's children. Right? And in doing that, we show the world that there is a way that is lit by the light of Christ so that the power of God's light and God's love will remain burning as a flame in you forever.